Q2A Live Shaw Sports Presentation. Oh my goodness, John Shaw! He could not, would not be stopped. Welcome to Starlight Stadium in Langford, everybody. You are here for the 2023 George Perks Challenge Cup in this Shaw Spotlight presentation. My name is Rotaro. Glad to be with you here for the 2023 edition. And this one features an interesting matchup. Normally, the George, George Perks Challenge Cup is contested between three divisions of the Vancouver Island Soccer League, divisions three, four, and five. By the end of it, it's normally two Div 3 teams standing. Not today. It's Div 3 Gorge FC against Div 4's Cook Street United. This is going to be an excellent tilt, especially with Cook Street, the Div 4 team, down nine players due to suspensions, ab absences, injuries, and other unfortunate events. You can see on your screen there, Gorge on your broadcast right in their white kit. or uh, Sorry, Cook Street in their white kit, excuse me. Gorge in their traditional black kit on the left. Starting lineups for both sides, starting with the Peacocks, Cook Street United on your screen there. In goal, Ricardo Tavazzani, a back four of Hamish McPherson, George Lucas, Prish Demel, and Andrew Warenga. Midfield three of Luis Lopez, Graham DeFort, and George Stadden. And a front three of Calvin Sitzma, Mo Bello, and Emmanuel Akanem. For Gorge, in black there, starting lineup in goal, Jacob Reynard, back four of Jonathan Chow, Daniel Mechback Spence, Derek Sweeney, and Ryan Bassey. A mid three of Andrew Fitzpatrick, Andrew Heels, and Kalen McEwen and a front three of Aiden Way, Jamie Zawaki, and Savak Dhaliwal. For Gorge, unfortunately, Lucas Spire unavailable for selection today, which is unfortunate because Spire is their leading goal scorer in league play with five goals to his name. Gorge, it should be said, had not the best league campaign, finishing seventh in the 10-team Div 3 of Vancouver Island Soccer League, whereas Cook Street United finished their Div 4 in second. So on pure league results, Cook, or perhaps, Cook Street are not perhaps the underdog you might think, though again, they are an entire division below Gorge. Cook Street have yet to put their name on the George Perks Challenge Cup. No wins to their names, but for Gorge, five different teams with the Gorge name have appeared on the George Perks Challenge Cup. 2005, the Div 3 side won it first. Then it was the Div 4 side in 2008, and then... Three wins in five seasons, 2018, 2019, and 2022 for the aptly named Gorgeous Guys. Technically part of the overall Gorge setup. So can the Div 3 Gorge setup add a second Div 3 to the Perks winners list? We will find out. And it looks like it will be Cook Street United to kick things off for us here. Standing over it there, number 15, Mo Bello. Starting at Central Striker. Bello with one goal in current cup competition. And having contributed another one in league play, he'll be likely asking more of a target forward in this setup. And we are underway. The 2023 George Perks Challenge Cup has begun. Cook trying to play out of the back quickly. High press, though, from Gorge. Almost turned over immediately. Jostling of boots there and coming away with it. There was a Kahneman Waringa. And they're forced back. That'll go out of play, and that'll be a throw-in deep for Gorge. Jonathan Chow playing full back there. will set this up quickly. His middle goes for Andrew Heels. Heels. Intercepted by Bello. Tries to clear that long. He's looking for the nice little touch there from Calvin Sitzma. Not able to control it, though. Gorge quickly back to the attack. Looking for loose touch in midfield there from Stadden. Bassi will send this all the way back to Reynard. Reynard looking for a long hit, going very direct, looking for the run, and he's found the run too. I believe that's Way who's made a charge in. First shot, a goal is a save. Great chance and close. Tavazani coming up equal to the challenge. They'll cook this one right back in. That was destined for Zawaki's head. Cleared away though. It's a few bodies there. Half hearted shout there for penalty. Nothing given. Referee in a good spot for it. And charging away on a counter here. Nice little touch. And away at full speed goes Calvin Sitzma. Not able to control, though, and he does end up conceding the throw. 
high tempo to start this tilt off. Not even two minutes in. And already we're seeing speed being shown by both teams' wingers core. Sitzma and Akanem for Cook Street. Way and Dhaliwal for Gorge. This one will go all the way back to Tavazani. Tavazani, as the name would suggest, an Italian player, actually turned on an offer to play in Div 1 in the Vancouver Island Soccer League. According to the club, it's because of his love for the peacock culture, which I was informed today is actually International Peacock Day. So is that an omen, perhaps, for Cook Street United? We'll have to wait and see. That attempt to play out of the back blocked. Stern blocked it from McEwen. And that'll go out for a throw as Gorge now on this near side. Bassey. Looking for help. Opts to go close. Little touch back in there from Andrew Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick. Usually wears the armband. Not seen one on today, though. That honor goes instead to Derek Sweeney. That center back who passed it over to McPack Spence there. The other center back. Looking for somewhere to go. Opts to go up the far side, but that will fall to nobody in particular. And Prish Demel will chase this down. Demel's normally a midfielder for Cook Street. He's actually been pressed into service as a center back again due to the significant number of unavailable players, including, and not limited to, Jonathan Hand, who is suspended due to a red card picked up in the previous round. Demel initially from Melbourne. He's actually moving away from Canada in the summer, so this is his last game for Cook Street, and he will undoubtedly want to head away. A little bit of silverware and a good memory from this cup final, so can Chris DeMille captain the side to victory? If they can get out of the back, that might be a good way to do it. They go long bellow now on the run here. He's got two options in center, but get the cross in, it's deflected. It does fall, but that'll be taken over away by Fitzpatrick. Following up, though, with space, though. Looking if there was Stadden, unable to get it to fall nicely. Now Gord's the other way, chipped forward, off the chest of Zawaki. Good hold up play there from the, the target forward. Bassey on this near side for Dollywall. They'll go all the way back now. And Derek Sweeney, back up to Bassey. Bassey on the deck, read nicely there by Hamish McPherson. And it's Cook Street back into midfield. Both teams here doing a good job of mixing up direct and link play and it's working out well for Cook Street as Bellow tripped over himself there, trying to hold on to it. Closed down, but coming away with it is Heels. Showing him a clean set of Heels and playing forward that time, looking for McEwen. McEwen chips forward. Oh, you can see the idea there. He wanted the run away. Couldn't find it, but still in play though. And Demel, oh, it's a little move, but it goes poorly. Down goes Way, that'll be a free kick at the edge of the area. Wouldn't be surprised if that's a card either for Demel, but no, the referee will just call it a foul. Great position here for this. We'll see on the replay. Demel, you can see, was trying a little move to try and throw off Way. Ends up committing the foul. He didn't really have a, much of an option there. It was either foul him or Way's off to the races. Off and away, you might say. I'll try not to make that pun too often. No promises. Bassey will stand over this one. He's got options in the box here. At least a good five tall target forwards to aim for. Bassey with the left footer. Natalie scooped up by Tavazani. Bassi might have been looking for a flick on there. Can't imagine that there was the intent to try and beat Tavazani directly. Ends up getting a touch to it. In the end, did Bassi to try and prevent the counter. Ends up conceding the throw. Six minutes gone. Nil all between Gorge and Cook Street United. Gorge FC in the all-black kits. Starting on your broadcast right, Cook Street United in their white and blue peacock kits. Starting on your broadcast left. Long ball there. Looking for way, can he find a way in? I swear I will stop trying to say that, but no guarantees. Nice little touch there, moving forward. Now a chance to break, can they find a way out? Is it kind of trying to help that forward and it'll go out to her throw. Easy, easy. Take on that far side there by Warenga. on shouts coming there and calm move there by Graham DeFort. George Lucas and Prish DeMel, the two center backs. 
for a way out. Nice little chip there to Luis Lopez. Lopez back to Lucas. High press there as Jamie Zawaki nearly stole it there from Gorge. Instead, it's DeMel moving out for Cook Street. Oh, nice little slip through there from Lopez. And they go long, looking for Bello on the run here. That should be intercepted by Mechback, or by Chow, excuse me. And he will put that out to touch. No nonsense there. Simple defending there and effective defending by Jonathan Chow. Cooksuit have shown that they are not afraid to try and play their way out of tight quarters. And while that's admirable, Cook have also, or uh, Gorge, excuse me, are also showing that they are not afraid to press, especially in these early moments. That kind of up-tempo play could lead to fitness trouble later on. Can't press that hard for a full 90 minutes, certainly not at this level. The foul was called there on a slightly aggressive tackle by Cook Street, and it'll be Gorge to play out from the back. Jacob Reynard taking this goal kick. Don't go long and direct. Looking for Zawaki there, and he'll get under it. Can't get the flick, though. Demel does. And Lopez trying to get him play his way out. Nothing doing there. They'll ask for help from Lucas. They'll come into the near side here to Waringa. Or to uh, McPherson, excuse me, not Waringa. Either way, it doesn't matter who it was. They couldn't keep it in, and it's Bossy. Throwing in quick. Played back to midfield. Touch there from Fitzpatrick all the way back to McBack Spence. It was direct. Met and headed down. Chested right into McEwen. Intercepted. Gorge really pressing numbers forward here. They feel like they can find their way through and they're committing hard to it. Be careful they don't open themselves up to being countered as they do so. But nice little touch here. Turning and firing right into the chest of Tavazani. Quickly thrown out. Like I said, Cook Street want to start these counters quickly. They're not shying away from it. Spin move there. So kind of thought he might have found a way through. Didn't, though. It'll be DeMail instead. Lucas. He's stared down there by Dollywall. And once again, having issues on this near side, it was Sitzman this time, not able to get that to stay with him. They'll, they'll bring that back a little bit here. Then referee's not quite happy with where that throw is set to take place. So Bassi will move a little bit closer to the spot where the ball left play. And now we'll send it all the way back to his back line. Sweeney over to McBeck Spence. Another direct shot here looking for Dollywall. Brings it down with one touch. Goes centrally. Zawaki back out wide. He's looking for Bassi on the overlap. I'll say it came off of, didn't go off of Bass, it actually went off of the Cook Street defender. I believe that was McPherson. Another throw on this near side for Gorge. They're starting to rack these up. Ten minutes gone. Heels to Bassey. Sliding challenge there and a stern one too from McPherson. Nowhere for Bassey to go that time. He does get yet another throw. As the line of attack moves closer and closer. Another look here as Heels. Nice crunching tackle there. All ball, nothing nothing sinister in it. And speaking of fouls, though, one conceded there in the attack by Gorge, and it'll be Cook Street to play out here. Kick taken short, and it's DeMel for Lopez. Oh, Lopez a little bit too cavalier there, and chance for a counter here. In great position is McEwen. Kayla McEwen one on two. Kept his footing as long as he could, ultimately muscled off the ball. And Cook Street managed to get out of that one unscathed. High press coming in there that time from Fitzpatrick. He comes away with it. Just not able to find that last killer touch there has been Gorge as they capitalize twice there in short succession on Cook Street turnovers. Once again, it's admirable that Cook are trying to play this game on the deck in close. Showing some technical expertise. Problem is, if that goes sour, now you've given up a ton of space. And with the higher press being shown by Gorger, they have attackers in great positions to make something out of this. Bassi. 
I was looking for the return to go to Kalen McEwen there. And that got picked off. Lopez. Espassi's inverted significantly here to make that play happen. McPherson tries to take some pressure off, and Lucas will go all the way back to Tavazani. Chris Stimmel. He's out. Keeps it close here. Warenga. Up the deck again. I think he was looking for the run of Bello there, but it was behind him. Yeah, I can see Bello putting the hand up saying, yeah, I had the timing wrong on that one. It was a good looking ball on the deck too. You would have almost expected that Warenga would go for the cross. Instead, tries the killer through ball. Well placed. Minus the part where it wasn't in front of the attacker. Just thought that that might have gone the throw the way of Cook Street and two players went over to get it. The uh, assistant referee felt otherwise and that throw taken by Gorge. Daniel Mekbeck Spence. Chow. Back to Mekbeck Spence. As Bello and Stadden will keep an eye on this. Stadden having moved up. Sweeney inside to Fitzpatrick. Nice touch from Chow as he goes inside. Little one two from McEwen. He's run into, unfortunately, a white jersey there and cleared. Stadden tries to flick that back and does. Moved forward quickly that time by Dufort. Bello trying to play hold up as it nicked away from him. Gorge will try and control from their own back line. And they go direct, looking for Dhaliwal. Instead, Lucas will head that over to Demel. Charging in late, though. That was Aiden Way. Full head of speed. And away again. Nice little backup from Zawaki. Couldn't find anybody in a black jersey on it, though. Hanum sends that back, and now forward again. Zawaki, or does Patrick make that? Very alert. Chow now for Gorge. Heels. Pops to run this in, Lopez met it. Throw for Gorge. Nil all, Gorge and Cook Street. It's the final of the 2023 George Perks Challenge Cup. Coming to you at Starlight Stadium out in Langford. Giveaway here, Tavazani. Bobbles it a bit. He hesitated a second there before coming out to claim it. Got there in time though. Tavazani will roll this out. Possibly an injury concern here. And he's behind the play. You can see just coming back into the field. I believe it was that. The defenders, that might have been uh, Lucas, which wouldn't be great for <laughs> for Cooks. They can hardly afford more players missing from today's roster. As you look at the benches there, it's in the middle of your screen as the ball goes overhead. You'll note the bench on your broadcast left is significantly less populated than the bench to the right. Meanwhile, lovely little moves here. As they go through, brought down, and they will call this. I believe it was offside, and the flag is up for offside. Is snaking through there. Kalen McEwen thought he had daylight, but the final ball there put the attacker offside. We'll take another look at it here. So McEwen does lovely work here, but then as soon as that ball goes through, Way was very much in an offside position. Now, you could make the argument there that because the first player to touch it was a Cook Street player, that, that would invalidate the offside, but the flag went up pretty much immediately from the moment the ball went through. Player in an attacking offside position, and the referee called that. The, if the interception or deflection had taken place much sooner, you could make an argument that Way would have been allowed to stay on side with that. Yeah. Instead, we'll be thrown on the near side as a, our microphone is duly repaired there by Derek Sweeney, and we thank him for that. Bassey with the throw. Bassey turning there in close quarters back, it goes to Bassey. Puts in the left footed cross. He's got a target in the center. That would be Way, but again offside. And now Way is uh, so careful that he doesn't vent his frustrations too hard, the, the assistant. Two offsides in relatively short succession. The Gorge attacker. Tavazani. 
Ops to go long this time. Bello is the target, goes over him though, headed away by McBack Spence. That one was looking for Lopez, and it's gonna be given away. Chance for Dollywall to break on the left. So in fact, Dollywall is past McPherson. Cross is blocked by McPherson though. McPherson has to be careful, that was a high boot at the edge of the area. He makes contact, it's an easy penalty. Meanwhile, uh, looks like another flag up for offside again. And they'll bring this one back. Dollywall, the great head of speed here. And that ball. And you can see just at the edge of your screen there, the flag did come up from the assistant. So as we were saying earlier though, that is the the uh, the issue that Cook Street will have to be cognizant of. The more they try and play out, the more they try and keep possession. If Gorge are able to continue to press high and open these spaces, space is going to open up like it did for Savek Dollywall. There might be space opening here for Kalen McEwen. That's where the ball goes. Did McEwen stay onside this time? He did. Up against Hamish McPherson, keeps himself, goes low, flicked on and in! What a lovely little flick! It's 1-0 Gorge! Gorge's relentless press pays off and it's a 1-0 goal. Here you can see McEwen dances in, lovely little flick on, sliding in. Aiden Way with the goal to make it 1-0, and we have our first goal of the cup final, and it goes to Gorge. 18th minute strike from Aiden Way, assisted by Kalen McEwen. Free kick here just past the midfield line. Demel will be standing over this. Right footer, looks long for an immediate reply, but that will find nobody's head and go straight out for a goal kick. Renyard is the, certainly been the less busy of the two goalkeepers as he starts the play there in his purple goalkeeper kit. I'm sure he will still have been happy to see that ball sail past harmlessly in the near side of his goal. Next back Spence. Gives that one away. That time Lopez moving over to the left side to try and stop that attack. Chow though finds a way through. Coming back to cover that time though was DuPont or DeFort, excuse me. Nice move there by Stad to try and dummy it out. And now McPherson has space here on this near side. Pearson goes inside. Nice little turn again from Stadden. Couldn't maintain possession though. And Demel forward to Lopez. Demel and Lopez being closed down by a triangle of gorgeous midfielders and attackers there. And Stadden will have to be careful with how they play out here. Waranga trying to help out. Lopez all the way back to Demel. He's just to sneak his way past Jamie Zawaki there. Forward goes Cook Street. Asking for a run here from Emmanuel Akana, but he won't be able to keep that in. You can see the idea though. Try and find some space there over at the far corner flag. A little too much pace on that ball though. It'll be a goal kick for Gorge. Aiden Way from Kalen McEwen in the 18th minute. Gorge up 1-0. For a seventh place finish in the regular season. They would love to get a little bit of silverware. Cap off their 2023. Nothing takes a sting out of a bad regular season like a cup win. Dollywall, nice little dance there and an extra little touch back to keep going. Plays out Zawaki on the far side. There's the cross. That'll be headed clear. But Way does a nice job intercept. Only briefly though. The middle they go. They've been looking for Bello, but didn't find him though. Bassi. Dollywall. It's right back to him. 
Again, trying to play on the deck there. That one well read by McPherson. Flicked on. Bello coming deeper now to try and get these plays started. And Lopez, can he get this in time? He might. Managed just to bend off multiple press, but the third one will be one too many. This time it's McEwen now with a lot of space to set something up. Zawaki wants it back. McEwen's cross this time. Tevazani is there. And he quickly rolls it out. Well, that might have been a little bit too quick there. Loose touch, but this time Cook Street does maintain. Managing to keep Andrew Heels. Backing up. Ikanam. Leaves it. Berenga. Zawaki trying to make things happen again for Gorge. Demel over to Lucas. Heels. That's Fitzpatrick. That's where it goes. Chow. Heels being marked here. That's the move back. FX Spence. Sweeney. Goes inside this time. It's Patrick not able to get a good touch though. It can him. Inside for Staden. Can him. Sitzmas tried to move forward here. He's looking for a way to run that channel, but the ball never makes it to him. Orenga tries to hold on to it. We'll go all the way back to Demel. Now Orenga inside for Lopez. Pass McEwen. Staden. Goes long. Now Sitzman trying to make the run. Renyard, though, equal to it. Good awareness. Nothing much there for Sitzman to do. Drop kick this one all the way past midfield. And referee will call that one. DeMel thinks that the there's perhaps a little bit of a lean back into the challenge there, and is you see a little bit of the frustration on the Cook Street defender. And you can see the idea there, but there is it is two on one, and DeMel does have his arms tangled up with him. It is a Something of a hard sell, considering that uh, Demel is clearly outsized by the attacker. But regardless, the referee does feel that was slightly unfair, and you do have to be mindful in those situations of where exactly you've left your hands. It's Patrick. Free kick is not his best. Low and into the mixer, and immediately cleared. Bassi. Patrick goes long. McEwen or Zawaki might have been the target there, but couldn't reach either. Instead, it would be Lopez. Bello. Not the best ball back from Bello. Demel will take over, but not for long. Taken away by Way. Goes inside looking for Zawaki. Couldn't get a touch to it. Good defending there. I believe that was uh, Stadden who'd come over to help. And Defort not able to hold on to that one. Kewen trying to dance his way through. Bello. Come all the way back here. Mo Bello listed as the starting forward striker. He's effectively running as an extra midfielder at this point to try and retain some possession here for Cook Street. That's the tactical adjustment being made here by head coach Joel Windles. And McPherson will pump that into touch. Past the halfway point of the first half. Gorge one, Cook Street nil. And looks like a substitution is going to be made here in the 25th minute, or at the 25th minute. And it will be Fitzpatrick coming out. Coming in for him. It's imagined to be a like-for-like -like substitution at this point in the game. Brendan uh, Ludzis coming in for him at midfield. Number eight for Gorge. Brendan Ludzis. So once again, like for like, as out goes Andrew Fitzpatrick. Imagine Ludzis will be asked to do pretty much the same thing and try and make sure the midfield stays a place of calm and control for Gorge. <laughs> Uh, 
So Waki trying to pick up that one from Lopez, but Demel is there. Now wide it goes. Warenga. Bello. Forehead and forward. Kanem looking for Sitzma. Headed clear that time by Sweeney. Locked. Bello. I'm going up against Luzis. Kanem. Back comes Way. He gets past both of them. There's the cross. But that's not going to hit Sitzma from there. Renyard looks to the near side. He's got Dollywell there. Up comes Bassi in support, but waiting for it was McPherson. Headed forward by Lucas, and now Lopez right back up the middle. Bello was in a very offside position and doesn't even attempt to make a play on the ball. And Renyard will play out from his own penalty area. Sweeney. So Waki with a little flick for Dollywell. Back comes Sitzma. Good defensive read there that time by Sitzma. Lucas goes long. Looking for Bello. Flicked on. Puts his head down and runs after his own flick. Trying to get their head of Sweeney. Sweeney will shield this. And he will get the throw. And it looks like Bell is calling for a sub there. And there will indeed be a substitution made here for Cook Street. So coming out will be uh, Mo Bello. In 28th minute. Bello out. And we'll see who replaces him in that center striking role. And it looks like they called in. Let's see here. It looks like they've called in Jovan Radvanovic. Just take place for Bello up front. Nice tackle there. Sitzma, can he get there? Gets a touch to it, but it'll be deflected, and that'll be a throw. For Cook Street, quick response here from Cook Street after that sub. Radovanovic with uh, no listed uh, goal contributions over the course of the season or cup campaign. Now would be a great time to change that. I have to imagine that he'll be asked before more or less Bellow's role of being a target forward, someone to aim for, for the midfielders and wide players. Someone who can hold up the ball and allow the attack to move. Dollywall. Sitzman looking to strip it away there, and he does manage to force the turnover and force the throw in. At the half hour mark now, 15 minutes to go before halftime, 1 0 Gorge FC over Cook Street United. 18th minute goal from Aiden Way, set up by Kalen McEwen, stands right now as the only goal. One substitution made each by both sides so far is now cross from deep. That might be a corner, and indeed it. It is. We'll get a set piece here deep for Cook Street. Their first, I believe, set piece from this area of the pitch all game. And one of the substitution was snuck in there after the sub of Radovanovic. Uh, Graham DeFort is out, and Dane Seedlitz has come into the game. This corner, floated in, flicked on from deep. We're gonna find a head it did. That was the head of Sitzma. But he got too far under that by far. And that will harmlessly float up and over. So in that last substitution there, just to confirm, that was Seedlitz and Radovanovic coming in for Bello and DeFort. Dollywall. Can get that one. Bit of a hard challenge there on Lopez. And Lopez takes it.
takes it quickly. Looking for Radovanovic. Taking back the other way, McEwen. Gets in the midfield, watched there and found that time by Seidlitz, who loses it, and now it's Gorge the other way. Heels on the deck, looking for Dollywall, finds him. Bassi looking to overlap. They go inside instead. Lovely one-two ball from Heels to Bassi. Bassi puts the cross in, and no one there at the back post, though. And that was a hope of all, but Chowd as well to keep that in. Saves the throw in, puts it on the deck inside. Little flick on, nobody there, though. Intercepted and cleared. And in fact, Spence has to be careful with this one, but does well. They'll go all the way back to Sweeney. Wide to Chow. Way, the goal scorer, cutting in and back. Runs out of space, though, and now it's Akanem. Trying to keep this one in and does. Finds Radovanovic. And that one will go out for a throw for Cook Street. Brief whistle here as they. As the referees will be conversing here on the center pitch. Not sure if it's a gear issue or something. Uh, so they'll take a moment here just to sort that out. There'll be a throw in for Cook Street once they have finished uh, dealing with the technical issue here. It might be actually an earpiece issue here, judging by the. The movements here of the fourth official and the head referee. One nils it stands, 18th minute goal with Kaylin McEwen charging in on the left hand side. Did a wonderful job to get past Hamish McPherson at fullback. Fed it in to Aiden Way. Slid in, chipped it past Ricardo Tavazzani. And that got us to the one nil scoreline we find ourselves out now. Will Cook Street respond here in the final 10-ish minutes of the first half? Sitzma, nice touch. Couldn't get it past Bassi, though. Recovered nicely. Heels. Forward to Lugis. Canham trying to back check. Goes long. Zawaki tried the hold-up play. Was looking for McEwen. Warenga walking out of the back with this one. Being given space to do so. Radovanovic for Akanem gets the return. But that return a little bit out of, out of his way, and Mechback Spence easily hangs onto it and then floats it out for a throw. I guess flicked header. Stadden will take control here, but loses out. Sawaki. Gorge do here on the counter. Sawaki's in space. Dollywall's calling for it on the far side. Balls to go to him, though. We lose this instead. Sawaki's hold up. Unfortunately, nobody in a black kit to pick up that one. But Lopez loses out. Chance here immediately. First time shot, though, goes wide. Heels that time. Thought he saw daylight. Was not able to hit the net though, and Tafazani was not exactly too far off his line, so not a surefire thing even if he had hit the target. Demel. Moringa forward, Akanem. Radovanovic back to Akanem. And now Lopez over to George Lucas. Silence inside. Stadden forward. The idea there was to hit Sitzma. Not too much pace on that one, though. Instead, it'll be Renyard. Sends it high. Heels. And watch there. Nice little move there that time by Stadden to hold on to it. Sidelets over the top. Sitzma. Flag still down, but Sitzma won't be able to chase that one down. A little bit too much pace on the through ball. Rendered quickly throws out to Bassi. Bassi clears that. Removing the pressure. That'll be a nicely placed ball right out to the corner flag. That'll be a goal kick for Cook Street. 
Forge expertly relieving the pressure there. Even if, even if Cook Street wanted to do a quick counter there, they've got to get the ball back in play first. Precious seconds eaten off the clock here as we final nine minutes of the first half, plus whatever the referee adds on for stoppages. It's calling for it. Not able to get there with Sidelitz, or not Sidelitz, so Waringa, excuse me, and Waringa loses out. That little clip, though, will earn a foul. As that promising attack is stopped. Down goes the goal scorer away. It's a little bit of a nudge that time. As you can see here, Stad just gets in the way. It's nothing uh, subtle about it. Also nothing malicious, though. It's a pretty standard foul. Demel clears. Radovanovic in a decent position. Does well to get past Sweeney. But sli sliding in there to make sure is Mechback Spence. The two center backs having each other's backs there. McPherson with a throw here. Doesn't get the return. They go all the way back. That time to Lopez. And now Cook Street will move forward. In the air they go. Sidelitz and Sitzma that time. Radovanovic, though, did this gentle touchback. A little bit too casual. But one back by Stadden. A cannon had retreated. Now we'll run onto this up against Chow. Cannon tries the fancy footwork. This man should shake one. Almost two. He will get the throw out of it. Thinks about quickly taking it. Warringa might take this from him and will. So they'll set up something here of a set piece. Warringa finds Radovanovic. Gets the return. They go inside, but no one there. And Lujis will leave that for Mechback Spence. Christian Mello up against Zawaki. Zawaki does, in the end, come away with it. Dollywell calls for it. Won't get to him, though. Sweeney's header to midfield. Touchdown by Heels. Forward to McEwen. Lopez clears. Bassi. Back to Sweeney. Sisman tries to press. Can't get there in time. Loses. Stern defending there from Seidlitz. No nonsense in midfield. And forward goes Cook Street on the counter. But Stadden not able to control that. Instead, it'll be Heels. Relieving the pressure with the back pass all the way to Renyard. Lopez steps up, the defensive midfielder. Good awareness there, but gives it right back. And Dollywall. Taking his time there. You can hear the calls of time. Or just need to force this, but they do see their opening. And now it's McEwen trying to cut inside and does. McEwen's got space here. Centers. Oh, it's launched away. That will be a corner. No nonsense defending from Cook Street. There is McEwen looking for his second assist. No nonsense there whatsoever. Barenga helping out and clearing. Meanwhile, that nearly found a target. It's going to be a Canem in the final five minutes of the half. Clearing. It's not here for Radovanovic to get to that. But Sweeney will have to move quickly and does. Chow. There's still plenty of gorge attackers forward here. If they want to try something, they just might. Zawaki up against Demel. Get some help. Centers. You not able to get there ahead of Lucas. Lucas back to Chow. Nice little switch there. Sweeney. Bassi back pedaling. Sitsuma coming in. Sweeney. Tough footer on the deck. Nice flick on there now to Bassi. Dollywall helping out. Nice little patient step there from Dollywall. Gets the return. Starting to dance his way through midfield. McPherson, can he get there? He can. He'll clear that. It should be a corner. And that's got a late substitution coming up here. And that looks like it'll be Emmanuel Akanem coming out for Cook Street. Coming in will be Gavin Simmons, it looks like. He's got some late legs here to see Cook Street through the half as Gorge starts to ramp up the intensity. Corner to be taken here. Left footer. Curls that as an outswinger. Headed clear. 
Second phase ball, a little chanting from Dolly Wall. He'll opt to go all the way back. Bassi. So for Dolly Wall. Dolly Wall's cross. Nobody there though. Nonsense defending is that ball heads in the direction of our brave camera operator. And looks like one more substitution being lined up here as uh, Gorge will make a similar move here. As uh, Sivak Dollywall will take a seat. Dollywall certainly hasn't done much of anything wrong here in his uh, first 42 odd minutes on the pitch. Oh, it's in the back of the net, though. We will get one right before the half. 2-0, Gorge. A devious little move there. A substitution leads to a goal. And Gorge will go into the halftime break with a 2-0 lead. It's a lovely little move here. Catches Havazani out of position. It's a ball's to first time shot. I believe that was Luchas who actually just took it. First time. That was Lucius. Find time for the substitute to get himself onto the score sheet. And it is indeed Lucius' goal. 42nd minute strike. 2 0 Gorge. There he is, the goal scorer. Dancing his way through midfield, and now Gorge have a lovely cushion to walk into halftime with. What a time to score as well. We go into halftime at 1-0. Cook Street have to feel that they can still do something to maybe smash and grab their way into a draw. But now, that lead just got much bigger. And now they need another goal to make something out of this. Meanwhile, nice strike here. Oh, that time, Tabazani was waiting for it. Wade was looking for his second. Tabazani need a quick kick upfield. Cook Street want one back before halftime if they can get it. Game on. Attempt to clear there, there by Lucas. Swing and a miss instead. Instead, that'll be a cross being put in there by Graham Thompson. Oh, that shot with a little bit of sting on it. Zani had to be sharp to that one. Take another look at it here. Yeah, that, was a, that was a stinging strike. Pay attention, then suddenly it's 3-0, and all of a sudden we may have a rout on our hands. Instead, it'll be a late corner here. Floated in, and does fall kindly, and it is in! It is in! Can you believe it? Two quick goals from Gorge! Just like that! And that header down and in. It's Zawaki, the big target forward, the recipient of that corner. And the ball just on the line there. You can see the head and hands. There was a chance to clear it, but couldn't quite get it done. Zawaki gets his goal in the 45th minute. Just when it looked like it was going to be 1-0 at the half. Gorge decide that they've had enough and they put two in. Are they seriously going to go for three? Tavazani comes out, snuffs that chance out. He had to get that one absolutely right. It's Thompson, nothing but him in air between the back of the net. There's a bit of a stern shoulder challenge, though, that time by McEwen. And it will be a late chance here as we see two minutes being added on for stoppages at the 45th minute here. Two minutes added on by the fourth official. Lopez to take it, looks long. Headed down by Bassi, swiped at that time, headed on by Radovanovic. Can Sitzma do something? Pops it up, but it will be out, and that will be a goal kick. So way in the 18th minute, Lugis in the 42nd, Zawaki in the 44th. Finds Gorge at a 3-0 lead. 
heading into halftime of the 2023 George Burks Challenge Cup Final. Bossy being watched there by Sitzma. A little bit of a barge there, and the referee doesn't like that one. And he'll actually uh, remind Sitzma to be a little bit uh, more careful. Here's what you can see from the goal. Lovely taken corner. Zawaki given space. And regardless of who's standing on the line to defend that ball, you cannot give a target forward like Zawaki that much space to operate on a set piece. Cook Street duly punished on that one. And there's the whistle. That'll do it for the first half. After 45 minutes, Gorge FC three, Cook Street United nil. Jamie Zawaki with his third goal in the cup competition. Aiden Way scoring his fifth. And Brendan Lugis with his first. Three goals for the team in black. They have 45 minutes to defend that three goal lead to get their hands in the George Perks Challenge Cup. You're watching Vancouver Island Soccer League Cup Final Weekend on Shaw Spotlight. My name is Juro and I'll be back with you for the second half.
Welcome back for the second half of the George Perks Challenge Cup here at Starlight Stadium in Langford on Shaw Spotlight. My name is Rotero. Glad to have you with us for the second half. Here are the goals from that first half, which has us at a 3-0 lead for Gorge. Starting off first, Kaylin McEwen, this lovely little run, sets up a sliding Aiden Way to get the first. Right on the deck, sliding in is Aiden Way. Second one, shot from distance. The ball falls just kindly on a lovely little bounce there. Straight over to Brendan Lugis. And he does so well to chip that and put it in the corner. And then on this corner kick, can't leave the big man alone on a corner kick, Jamie Zawaki. Solid header. And a little swing and a miss there. A chance to clear off the line. Just couldn't get it to go. And that is how we ended the first half at 3-0. So the team switched sides to the second half. So on your broadcast right in their white kit with blue socks, Gorge United, or uh, Cook Street United FC, excuse me, in their black kit on your broadcast left are Gorge. And... There was a quick and last line defense there by George Lucas from Cook Street's defensive line. And it'll be a throw in on that far side now. For Ryan Bassey from Gorge. Goes all the way to his back line, waiting for it there. Derek Sweeney, still wearing the armband today for Gorge. On the opposite side is Prish Demel in his final game for Cook Street United. Back line, another defender wearing the armband. Meanwhile, Bassey puts in the floated ball to that corner, knocked down, and a strike right at goal, and it's in! Just like that! We start the second half with Anthony Pascuzzi coming off the bench. And if, if, you, if you weren't, if you weren't uh, satisfied with only there being two goals in two, three minutes to end the first half, Good news, we're starting the second half with more goals. Follow up there, nobody marks Pascuzzi as he charges in. Forty-sixth minute strike for Pascuzzi. So for those of you who are mathletes at home, that means in the span of five minutes, three goals. Outstanding stuff here for Gorge if they have decided to go to another gear. This is a match of teams from two divisions. Gorge from Div 3 of the VISL, Cook Street from Div 4. And while it's been more or less close in the first, let's say, 40 odd minutes of this match, in the last five or six, uh, Gorge have really started to show that there might be a bigger gulf than first thought, but not to be outdone, here comes Cook Street with a response. On the deck, that ball from Dane Silence. Someone to run in onto. Ooh, nice deflection though, but able to hang on to it. Cross comes in, that should fall to Renyard and does. And the Gorge goalkeeper will take over from there. As it stands right now, the Pascuzzi was the one substitution that didn't immediately jump out. Although Ryan Jorgensen, I see, has also come in here. Or goes just temp pair. Pascuzzi trying again for the, the spectacular. Nothing doing that time. Jake Bulger has also come into this match here for Gorge. We get the full list of subs here for you in just a moment as we try and see who managed to sneak their way in here at halftime. It looks like for the most part the attacking core is what's been moved. Backline still is more or less intact, though they have changed one option at fullback. Looks like Jonathan Chow has come out and Chris Doxy has moved in in his place. There. Maybe it looks like Bassey to take this. No, it'll be Sweeney instead. Goes quick. Now Bassey will go right up the line to Sweeney. A little bit of set piece trickery here from Gorge. 
Up by four, still not afraid to try the trickery that time, though. Doesn't quite work, and that'll be cleared out to touch by McPherson. Gets a deflection on it, too, and we'll get the throw. Lopez, part of the Colombian contingent. On this Cook Street United side. Razani over to Uranga. Well capped. Ranga steps over two challenges and couldn't get past the third one though, though that third one was a deflection off of Ryan Jorgensen. And it'll be a throw for Cook Street. Ranga doing what he can to keep his side in this one. Former VISL U21 champion and a Prospect Lake youth uh, product is Waringa. Currently the youngest player on the squad. Pearson. On the deck, for assistance there, does find it. Form of Clay Rock, one of the assistant coaches slash players for Cook Street. Shows you the uh, <laughs> the depths that uh, Cook Street are pulling from here to try and make numbers here. As again, they were hit hard by injuries, suspensions, absences. Looks like Radovanovic has come out at halftime, allowing Rock to come in. I think, I think that is the only sub for Cook Street. The only sub they have remaining, according to this list, is Brandon Johnson, and he is, as far as I can tell, not on the pitch just yet. Nice little deception there. Let's rock forward to Seidlitz. And Seidlitz off the line! Sweeney with the last-ditch defense! Derek Sweeney making sure that he does his part here, as you would expect a defender and a captain to do. Oh, it looked like Cook Street had finally found the back of the net, but Derek Sweeney said no. Demel. Turned down Bulger that time, and now Pascuzzi scored to start this second half. Looks at Lucas, who goes long. Okay, for silence. Cuts it back. It's a lovely little cutback, too. And is that a penalty? It is! They're saying the challenge was unfair there by Mechback Spence. And the referee points to the spot. We'll have a look at it here. Love the little ball in by Rock. This is the initial save. That was the chance there by Silence cleared off the line. We'll get back to the penalty in just a moment here. And here it is. Chance for Cook Street to finally get themselves on the board. And there is the slide in. It was a slide in. On. It looks like Waringa had actually made the run there. All right, and here we go. From the spot. What a save! Renyard comes up massive. Jacob Renyard. And that was a well-struck penalty as well from Cook Street. The save equal. It remains 4-0. In favor of the team in black. Butes just one of the goal scorers. Blocked there by Prish Demel. Demel looking for the long ball. Sweeney over to Bassi. So it looks like Wei and Zawaki were two of the players brought off at halftime for Gorge. And been replaced by Pascuzzi. Jorgensen. Sweeney, on this, let it fall to Renyard. In comes Rock trying for the little sneak attack there, nothing doing. Jorgensen, Bulger, Escuzzi, up front there, trying to make things happen, but Demel, first to it, shakes off Jorgensen twice here. Looks for some help, gets it. Renga out wide. So he'll play the one two and try and tire out Jorgensen. They do have him out of position here. And it will be a nice little ball forward. Rock helps them clear. Or Simmons, excuse me, helping with that clearance. Meanwhile, that ball, if you can see the target there, the idea was to get the tap in for Bulger. Pavazani, alert to that one. Just send this one long. 
Sitzma and Rock waiting for it. Sitzma, leading scorer in the regular season for Cook Street. And he does win himself a free kick here on that challenge. Need to be unfair. Can't say that they haven't put in a lack of effort trying to find the back of the net from either side. This is quite the cup final. 55 minutes gone. 4 0 in favor of Gorge. Free kick set up here. Rock stands over it. And the referee will actually pace this off. Make sure that the wall is an appropriate number of paces away. Satisfied with this. We will cl blow the whistle and we'll allow that free kick to be taken. Here we go. Loaded in. One body down. Referee isn't interested. It was Demel who actually went down. And counter is on here for Gorge. Sent forward that time by Doxy. But that one goes right to Tevazani. No real support there. And it was Demel who went down and he's. Limping a little bit as he comes back, but he's still jogging back into position. Captain will keep going. Collision of heads there between uh, Sitzma and Simmons. Instead, via throw. Moringa. Gets it inside. Back to Demel, who's now in position. Staring down Pascuzzi. Lucas. Pearson has gone on a bit of a run here on that far side. Backup provided that time by Stadden. Lucas again. This time looking for the run. That's intercepted. Bassi. Pearson is both Bassi and McPherson inverting heavily here from their normal spots on the pitch. And that does open up quite a lot of space, but that is cleared by Lucas. Brock looking for support. Packed forward. Stadden chests it down over the top. Sidelitz waits for it, but. Not, in front, not gonna get past McBack Spence. Once again, looking for the run. Silas having moved further and further forward, it seems like, with each foray out of midfield. Cook Street happy to let him run there. To be fair, so is Forge. Or, uh, Gorge, excuse me. Renyard. Sweeney, Bassi. Some hold of Pascuzzi there. Now calling forward is Bulger, who's moved way up, but that's gonna be a bit of an ask there. Instead, he loses just trying to get it out wide, and does. Nearly picked off, though. Simmons was waiting for it. Instead, back back Spence. All the way back to Renyard. Sweeney. Has space to operate in here and will use it to go long. Pascuzzi won't fall for him. But Lukes will get there ahead of the on rushing attack attempt there by Graham Thompson. Now that long ball nearly found its mark. What are you doing there? Looks like the only other substitution that we missed from that first half was McEwen coming out for Gorge. That would have been Chow, Wei, Zawaki, and McEwen who came out, placed by Bulger, Jorgensen, Pescuzzi, and Doxy. Trying to get his way through, can't find it. He heals. Looking over here. Renyard goes long. Clearance though met. Not fully cleared that time. Dude just scored to heals now. Runs into his hand there. Simmons getting in the way. It does force the turnover. And now the burst of speed forward comes Staden. On the deck. Bit of a coming together of bodies. And referee will play advantage there after a fairly. Uh, Unsubtle shove there by Seidlitz on the attack. Not referee wise to play advantage there. Let's let the game continue. The goalkeeper has control of the ball. And things progress as we hit the hour mark here in this George Perks Challenge Cup final. 
Gorge four, Cook Street nil. Aiden Way, Brendan Lutzis, Jamie Zawaki, and Anthony Pascuzzi, your four goal scorers for Gorge. Pascuzzi scoring that fourth one at the 46th minute mark. Starting this half off with a bang. To be fair, the previous half ended with a bang to two goals in three minutes. Lopez under pressure, dishes that away to Lucas. They look for McPherson, tapped forward. Sitzma trying to run onto this up against Sweeney. Puts the cross in, deflected. Will that be out for a corner? It will be corner for Cook Street on the far side. It's the first corner for either team in this half so far. 15 minutes in this half gone. Half hour to go. If Cook Street are serious about trying to make a make a mad dash to the finish here, they're going to need a goal now. And they will ask Andrew Warenga to provide this corner. Plenty of targets forward here. Only person back is McPherson. Near post flicked on. It's in the, the boots there. Briefly caught in the boots of Doxy. Gorge does clear. McPherson runs just enough interference. But Lopez is there. He'll be able to shield off Thompson. Brave back pass there from Tavazzani to the empty corner. Lopez looks. Might have been looking for Sitzma there, but regardless, it'll be a sub being called here. And it looks like uh, Stadden will be coming out. And Kanem will be coming back in. Take a look at the penalty here. And this was not a gentle one. That was taken with pace by Waranga. And a great save by Renyard. And he's there to cover the secondary effort. Here goes Seidlitz. With pace, Mid, a little shoulder there, that'll be a foul, and that'll be a yellow. First booking of the game. And that'll be a yellow shown. No real surprise there. So that should be uh, Chris Doxy going into the book, the fullback substitute who came on in the 62nd minute, I believe. Finds himself into the book, no real surprise there. No, Nothing necessary about that foul. Doxy gets in, there's no reason. Shoulder to the back, absolutely unnecessary. Renga standing over this, two-man wall. Floats it in, and the header goes to the back post. No one able to collect it though, or at least get a shot off. They recycle this one from distance. No Cook Street player able to get a clear path to goal that time. Now chance for Gorge to try and counter, but Warenga does very well to get in the way. But he's giving it away to Pascuzzi. Pascuzzi now one on one, but that's cleared into safety. McPherson coming in from his off wing there to make that challenge. So it's substitution earlier there to confirm that was uh, George Stan coming out, Emmanuel Akanam returning to the game. See where they deploy him now. Stadden having been that midfield option. Will they leave a Canem there as well? Or will they push somebody like Simmons back? It looks like they've left Seidlitz as one of the forwards. Playing on that right wing. And there's the throw in. And that will be a foul going against Gorge. Looks like Tavazani will take this free kick. But Demel is standing over it. I don't know if he perhaps wanted to play that. Captain thought otherwise. Kind of. Renga's on the overlap. Gets the return. He lets that roll. It was deflected. He'll take the throw anyway. Kind of now. Out for another throw. So already, Kind of showing that a uh, little bit of pace injection on this near side may prove to be beneficial for Cook Street. 25 minutes to score four goals. They're going to need a heck of a lot of pace. 
And more importantly, they're gonna need to turn that pace into an actual shot on target that can challenge Renyard, who has been dialed in. He's already made a save from the penalty spot. And meanwhile, Graham Thompson here for Gorge. Can he keep this in? He can. Thompson sliding, but not quite. It does trickle over the end line there. Actually, they might have called that on the offside. Nope, did go up for a goal kick. Pearson now runs this forward for Cook Street. Graham DeFord has come back into this game now for Cook Street. So there's your midfield presence. Oh, that shot just floats over the far post. Once again, Gorge not going away, showing that they can provide threats from any part of the pitch today, seemingly at will. As that ball just falls behind the Piscuzzi, didn't even think twice about it, put his boots through it. Demel. Mazzani. Lucas. Avzani flares it up to the near side. Well, Renga put himself into a nice bit of space here. Four. Back to Orenga. Close quarters. Blocked. And Stern defending there in the midfield. Pascuzzi, though, couldn't hold on to that. Bit of an awkward stretch there, and Pascuzzi went down awkwardly. Did he stretch himself out there? He's going to shake that off, it looks like. He should be okay. It's Honey. Brave goalkeeping there to just stare down the onrushing Graham Thompson. McPherson has a look. Puts it on the deck. Little return from Sitzma. Forward it goes. Sidelets make that not Sitzma. So that would have been the substitution that we just missed there. Sidelets, Sidelets moves out to the right. Sitzma comes off and DeFort comes on to replace him. We have another substitution. We have another bunch of substitutions here coming off. It looks like so Thompson coming off. And the Gorge faithful are liking what they see here. They were chanting at the halftime break that they wanted to see certain players come on, and it appeared that their request has been uh, has been met. So it looks like Doxy will be coming off as well. We've seen the pitch though. Can't be too much to complain about there. This looks like Jake Bulger will also be coming off, I believe. Although the, looks like this, the Cook Street uh, substitutions are coming in now as well. We'll, we'll rotate, looks like, the entire bench here. Rock. Yeah, I'm going to try and approach as many people back in. So with Rock coming out, that would mean Bello comes back in up front as that target forward. Get things started. Stadden has come back in as well. It's on the ball now for Cook Street. Deflects to Fort. Gets their head of Lucius. Tack forward is still with it, but now it finally squirts free. And now one of the substitutes for Gorge, number 47, Ethan Martinson. Starts that counterattack, but easily picked up by Cook Street, and they'll, they'll stop that. We'll have a couple of words there. To Mel, to Uranga. We just tried to get a touch to it, and it will be Gorge going the other way, but Demel stops that. Only as far as Lugis, though. Finds Piscuzzi. The flag is still down. Oh, but a little shove there. That's not necessary for Moranga at all. And that might get him a yellow front sporting conduct. And then he's going to, at the very least, get a talking to from the referee. So there's the, there's the shoulder board. It is shoulder to shoulder. But then this part afterwards, no. You do, that's going to be an easy way to get yourself booked if the referees decide he's seen enough. 
But only a stern talking to. Warenga escapes discipline there. That, Pascuzzi called for the foul there in the jostling of heads with Lopez. Lopez. Bello. His first touch since coming back on is a met hard. There, Sisma trying to turn away now is fouled. And that'll be a free kick in favor of Cook Street. So that was indeed Sitsma coming back in for Sidelitz. Let's see here. Yeah, it's a pretty straightforward foul there. Nothing too uh, untowards about it, minus the part where it's against the rules. And that ball cleared. And a chance for Bulger. Keep things forward. Pascuzzi. There's another little shovel. We'll play advantage here. That was definitely a foul. Bulger allowed to play advantage. Sitzma. Tries to step on the near side and does manage to get clear, but only as far as a sliding challenge there coming in. From Cam Wolf. Wolf number 20 for Gorge there. One of the other substitutes being brought in. They'll move that free kick back for Cook Street. Flicked on, and at the back post, what a save! It looked for all the world like it was going to be a tap in for Emmanuel Kahneman, but Jacob Renyard again. Coming up massive for Gorge. Little flick, a lovely flick there by DeFort. Exactly what you want to see from the tall man. But Renyard denies. Brought in near post, blocked. Renda's second phase ball, though, will go in, and this time cleared a little more emphatically. Nice little move there from McPherson. Pascuzzi, though, fouls him. And Pascuzzi's going to be careful here. He's been uh, called for a few fouls. The referee might be giving him a talking to as well, saying, hey, Maybe not so much, though. I think the referee's more interested to see to make sure McPherson's all right. And substitution being called up now. And Pascuzzi is going to be coming out of the match now. This might be a preemptive sub here. He's got the goal. Kick off this half, did Pascuzzi. And he will be subbed off for, looks like Jake Ash is coming in. So Ash will see the pitch here. Slice down there. That's going to be a card, surely, and it will be a yellow. No second thoughts with that one. Wolf with the sliding challenge from behind. That's not something you want to be doing on the regular if you want to stay in the referee's good books. 73rd minute. That is the second player booked and the second gorge player booked. As you can see, yep, yeah, sliding in. That's a pretty clear foul. Doesn't really make a clean play on the ball and cleans out the defense or the attacker in the process. Warenga floats that in, but only finds Black Kit. Lucas immediately puts it right back into the mixer. It might be an offside call there, but it doesn't matter because Renyard gets there first and immediately rolls it out. And here goes Gorge. Back forward. Noah acting close there, now playing at full back. The substitution's coming fast and furious here. Akinko sitting on that back line now. Yeah, throw on that far side, I believe, for Cook Street, and it will be. Fort shows short for it, and it will go to Bello instead. Mo Bello on the deck to Fort. Gets a toe to it, but. Off his toe last, and out it goes. No 
no rush here. 75th minute, 15 minutes away from full time, and Gorge are in control here and are happy to see this win out. You have to imagine at whichever pace they decide, Jake Ash, one of the substitutes, just managed to uh, get the deflection and the throw in here. Gorge will uh, this go all the way back to the fullback. This will be Tyson Rand who managed to make his way into this match as well for Gorge. I believe he subbed in for uh, Ryan Bassey as that left-sided fullback. There by Sitzma, trying to get past, puts the shoulder into Rand. Rand up winning the throw out of it. Still not for the defender last. Martin's in there as well. And now that will go the way of Gorge as the attempt to play in is met and cleared. Gorge FC 4, Cook Street United nil. Gorge made an emphatic statement slightly before and slightly after halftime that they wanted their names on the trophy this year and Cook Street have been given quite a few opportunities including a penalty to try and claw their way back into this. Gorge have stood tall at every test. Laird out to the far side there. Lucius managed to tap it over to Martinson, sends it back. They'll go all the way back now to Sweeney. Derek Sweeney and Daniel Mechback Spence are the only two players for Gorge not to have been subbed in or out of this match. Even Andrew Heels, who was seemingly ever present midfield, has also been given a well deserved rest. We have free kick taken here. and clears. Sitzma inside for DeFort. Able to get past though. Standing tall there was Wolf. Midfield. Looks like Jorgensen is the right sided attacker. Now Bulger is the central forward. Ash on the left is how Gorge is setting this 4 3 3 up with Wolf, Lucius, and Martinson as the midfielders. Over. Lorenga, though, not able to hold on to that. It'll be a throw for Gorge. Lucius. Looks long. He's got a idea there to try and spring Ash. Designed as well to look him off. Now gets it over to Demel. Run this out himself. Nice little step touch there. That was Lopez to come in. That comes off of the back. Jorgensen. Down to And out. Noah acting close. One of the two acting closes for Gorge. The other being Chase. One of the people warming up on the far side there. I don't believe Chase Ackenclose has seen the pitch yet today. We've got 12 more minutes though to change that state of affairs. A Staden now. It's going all the way back to McPherson. Lucas. Right up the middle. The port puts it run for Bello. Gets the return. But we're between the 17s and it'll be Gorge's winning out. It is a race between 17s. That means Andrew Heels did find a way back into this match. Actually, that would have been Ethan Martinson, wouldn't it? It would have been 47, not 17. And there indeed he is, Ethan Martinson. 
Might be able to keep that in though. Final 10 minutes of the final. Cook Street would need to explode for an absolute avalanche of goals at this point. And the way that these teams are set up with Cook Street missing so many players and Gorge happy to rotate through almost their entire bench. You have to think by sheer weight of numbers here and the available fitness levels of each team. Gorge should be able to see, safely see this one out first though. Substitutions coming in. And that looks like that will be Jorgensen coming out. And that should be, that actually might be Heels coming back in. You see here. Rand, I believe, is also sitting to come out. So Rand is coming out. His cameo appearance is finished. Street as well. Demel floats it in. Right into the mix or cleared. Swing and a miss though. Saved by Jacob Runyard, absolutely sure. And as we uh, get coverage on the subs, if we can confirm that the final two subs for Gorge, their entire bench has now been used as Chase Akinklose and Silen Semik are now in this match. Springing forward here, looking for something that's a speculative shot at best, on target though. But uh, nothing doing there for Noah Akinklose. So both Akinkos brothers now on the pitch, both playing fullback with Noah on the right and Chase on the left. Sajun Semi moves into more of a midfield role. CP moves forward from that. Right now it's still Ash and Bulger up front. Let me take a look here. A little bit of a foul there, it's not necessary. Bit of a clumsy touch there really. Taken by Lopez. Cleared. Moringa. Past Ash. Nice little step and turn there, but sliding in to provide help. There was Bulger. It'll still be a throw, though, for Cook Street. Still trying his best to make things happen here. Moringa hesitated just a second there. It was long enough for Lucius to get in. Moringa wins it back in a little bit of a duel here on the near side. Now Lopez touches it over to Bello. Escapes the challenges out wide. Demel. He's got Lucas to his right. Opts to go forward. It's a good decision. Charging in now. On the deck. Oh, does he get through off the post and out? Oh! Wait, have they called that? Are they calling that as a goal? Their flag went up from the assistant. They might say that crossed the line. I think they will. That is a goal. 84th minute. Cook Street are on the board. It goes through and they say it went over. Now was it was it DeFord at the end getting a touch or was it the initial cross? There he hits the post. And there's the touch. Well, it doesn't get much closer than that, does it? I'm beginning to get that to Sitzma maybe. Either way, it's definitely a goal. It's 4-1, Cook Street have won.
hands right now, that goal is Sitzmas. Let's see how close that was on the line. We may need to take another look at it. It is 4-1. Looks good if you look for their goal, that would be a handball. He spots that and puts it back. Five minutes to go in regular time. Morenga. I'm sure Cook Street will be happy to have their goal, though you have to think at this point it might be a little more than consolation. That goes over the head of Rock. And it'll be Lucas stopping Ash from getting a clear run on goal there. More substitutions here. The cycle of players continues. It looks like be Ash coming out, actually. And it is indeed. They're calling Aiden way back into this game. Aiden way opened the scoring with an 18th minute strike. Sliding in to finish a lovely setup. Kaylin McEwen. Well, from your side, that'll be given the way of Cook Street. Well, that foul will be given right at the edge of the penalty area, and it'll be given against Lopez. And Lopez getting a boot in there. You can see where the foul was called. It was not a hard call to make, as to the ground went way there, having just been brought back in. But that quick take wide of the net. And ultimately, the chance comes to nothing. Not that I think. Gorge will be too upset being up 4-1 in a cup final with three minutes to go. Demel. Lucas. Lucas had to be quick there. Way nearly picked his pocket. Morenga. Steps inside to avoid Semi. New side. Kind of. Rebello turns. And again, being asked to get past Semi there. And it will go the way of Gorge, it looks like. Some of these referees in the stands here disagreed with it. Unfortunately, they're not the ones with the flags and fetching yellow jerseys. Back, back Spence crosses that. In comes Sitzma, who right now credited as the goal scorer. Lopez. Kana. Get the return here, he just might. Does well to keep possession and steps back inside. Emmanuel Kana going for a run here. A little backfield clearance met by Bello. Emmanuel Kana still trying to get it done on this near side. Great effort being shown here in the dying stages of this match. That's like one more sub here for Gorge. This so will be Jake Bulger coming out of the match, it looks like. This might be this might be, this might be, I don't think that's McEwen coming back in, but well, it very well might be. A stern header on it as well. It's way though, concedes the foul. On Lopez. That is McEwen actually who came back in, so there you go. It is McEwen back on. McEwen and Way will open the scoring. Reunited to get there again in the dying stages of the match. Well, on your side here, you can see there's a Lopez needs some help to get back to his feet there from Stadden. Bello. Lucas. Berenga. Staden cuts inside, tries to lose Lucius. Long ball from Lucas, looking for Akana. That's headed clear. But offside, flag goes up on the far side there from the assistant. We are into the final minute of the cup final. And it will be three minutes added on for stoppages. So three minutes of the referee's mercy. And you'd have to think 
that's only as long as Gorge will need to claim the George Perks Challenge Cup. Barring a comeback of monumental proportions, which in the VISL you could never count out. The Aiden Way here. Throwing his touch to the corner. They'll try and kill this game off in the corner. And throw goes their way. They just might get it done here. It's classic time wasting here. Keep the ball in the corner flag. Keep the, keep the other team off of it. Waste as much time as you can to see the game out. They'll go long, though. They'll try and put it into the area for one more. And it will be cleared. Lorenga trying to do the lion chair. They're with their Lopez standing in the way. And they go long. Back Spence gets there. Bello will chase this down. They'll go all the way back to Renyard. Way juggles that forward. Puts it on the deck. Oh, it's gone through for McEwen. Can he round the keeper? Cleared! Crash Demel! Does his own fantastic work at the back to keep this scoreline at 4-1. Oh, it looked like Kalen McEwen had found his way through. Tabazani out. But the captain comes back to save, save the day. Both teams, defender captains, coming up with big clearances in this match. And it will be a late corner here for Gorge. And they will take it short and they will try to kill as much time off as possible. Way brought down. That will be a free kick now. Stadden went in a bit too hard. And they'll likely do the exact same thing here. As you can see, Martinson. There's Stadden hauling down Way. It's a pretty easy foul to call. And we'll go right back to the corner flag. And it looks like he will get another throw here with some assistance from Cam Wolf. Now Wolf will throw this all the way back. George Lucas. Georgia's, excuse me, Derek Sweeney. Sweeney, whose name I haven't had to say in a good long while, the captain for Gorge today. Ball will go out. Well, Martinson running a little bit of uh, interference there to the uh, dismay of some of the crowd. Almost played the three minutes for stoppages. It's basically, be check the referee to check their watch there. Uh, on ball, the way tried to get there ahead of Tavazani. Send it right back upfield. Right back Spence. Varenga. And Semi closing down. He does well to come away with it. Sajun Semi spins away again. On the deck, inside. Q not able to come away with it, now does. There might be more here at Gorge. There's some calls from the far side of the box. Tad, oh, that's a, that's a foul. As George Stadden put a boot in there against Cam Wolf. And you can see the step in there. Wolf definitely uh, made sure the referee saw that one. And that's gonna do it. Free kick won't be necessary because that is the game. 4-1, Gorge FC are your Div 3 team hoisting the Challenge Cup in 2023. Goals from Aiden Way, Brendan Lugis, Jamie Zawaki, and Anthony Pascuzzi. We're enough to see Gorge through. The response from Calvin Sitzma, a little more than consolation for the Div 4 side. And the seventh place finish of the season, you have to think somewhat balanced out by being the sixth Gorge team to have their name carved onto the George Perks Challenge Cup. We'll take a look at some of the second half highlights here, and there were there were a few, including, well, how about the first goal? Pascuzzi just running straight in. Catching a couple of people switched off from the start of halftime there, and that was the final goal that would be scored, but not for lack of effort. Massive goal line clearance there from George Sweeney.
or Derek Sweeney, excuse me. Sweeney making sure that it stayed four. But what a great save there by Renyard. Warenga came in at full head of steam for this penalty. Renyard guesses correctly, stays low. Keeps that one out. Then another save from Renyard, stopping a cannon from having a tap in at the back post. And there it was. That was the one that took a second to call, but you could see the little move in as Sitzma. Thought he'd had it. And they did indeed, in fact, give that goal. But ultimately, it was only a constellation for Cook Street United. And Gorge celebrate as the 2023 George Perks Challenge Cup winners. They'll do their handshake now. Excellent final played by both sides. So the, the gulf in quality between the Div 3 and Div 4 side started to show itself a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more as the game went on. And we got to half time. Gorge decided that they would in fact like to start winning now. And that is what they did. Jacob Renyard, the Akaklos brothers, Noah and Chase. Daniel Mechback Spence, Derek Sweeney, Sayun Semi, Cam Wolf, Brendan Lugis, Ethan Martinson, Kaylin McEwen, Aiden Way, Ryan Bassey, Andrew Fitzpatrick, Sevek Dollywell, Jonathan Chow, Jake Ash, Jamie Zawaki, Graham Thompson, Chris Doxey, Anthony Bascuzzi, Andrew Heels, Tyson Rand, Ryan Jorgensen, and Jake Bulger. All the Gorge players who saw the pitch today, the only one unable to take part, Lucas Spire was unable to today. The, their goal scoring leader from the league campaign for Gorge had five goals to his name. Wasn't needed today though as four goals from four different players, enough for Gorge FC to hoist the George Perks Challenge Cup. There are two more cup finals coming today on the VISL's cup final weekend. Hope to see you for them. Until then, my name is Rotoro. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.